Well, it's that time again. It is time to review another book. And this time, uh, because I scrambled my December TBR simply because I ran out of time to read all the things that I wanted to read, so I pushed some things to January, uh, that being Ruin and Death Masks. But I did fit in, with the couple days that I had left, my first Discworld novel by Terry Pratchett, and that is Mort. Let's talk about it. Now, if you are new to Discworld like I am, there are several channels and videos that will explain to you what the hell it is. So I'm not going to do that here, except for very, very briefly. Now, as I understand it, there are several different places that you can start Discworld. Because you can do publication order, which some people don't recommend. You can start with Mort, you can start with Guards Guards, you can start with all kinds of different books. And that is because this whatever 47 novels that exist is not one continuous story. So Mort, for example, follows death. So this is actually Discworld number four, but death book number one. So you follow death, the Reaper man. And I was pretty sure that I was going to enjoy at least this one going into it because the character sounded funny. The entire premise was interesting and hilarious. And from what I have gained from talking to people about Discworld, it did sound like something that I would actually find to be very funny, and it was. So Mort is about the character Mort. He is a young man, he goes to a job fair, and he's trying to get an apprenticeship. He's there with his dad, his dad really wants him to be an apprentice of some kind, and no one wants this dude as their apprentice. Until, lo and behold, death comes along and offers him a job as death's apprentice. And that is where this story picks up. Now you do get a brief, very brief sort of overview of what Discworld is. It is literally a disc shaped planet that is floating out in space on the backs of four elephants that is also on a back of a giant space turtle. It's pretty weird. And it is actually a flat planet. So you can fall off of it. And I guess out into space. Correct me if that's wrong. Uh, there, there's all sort of, sorts of quirky things going on where there's uh like the first couple pages introduce you to just some of the the crazy wacky aspects of like how hangovers work in reverse where you start to get hung over and then you have to drink to prevent the hangover from happening <laughs> so that's kind of weird uh there's things called reannuals where plants kind of grow in reverse there's a bunch of like goofy shit going on and there's footnotes throughout the entire book of just things that like terry pratchett is just being hilarious throughout the entire book basically world building and adding footnotes to just explain random things about the world he'll like asterisk certain words throughout the text and then there will be a footnote for it uh, and he also did a fantastic job of just having a lot of humor in all of the dialogue i mean the premise itself is ridiculous like death getting an apprentice um but so like starting there and then death the character being funny is what kind of carried the book because as soon as you get into it you find out that Death is a crotchety old man. He's kind of senile. He doesn't really understand how humans work. And he's surprised by all kinds of things. Like at one point, Mort asks for a day off because he's been working for whatever, a week straight. And Death's like, what the hell is a day off? He's like, I just, I don't want to work. I would just like, you know, some time to just go be a person again. He's just like, okay that's weird but sure go for it death actually goes out into the world and tries to understand humans more and is confused by dancing and what having fun is he gets drunk because he wanted to know what being drunk was uh he doesn't understand sadness so when he's talking to albert who's kind of his butler at death's estate uh, he's he's like he's he's tr i forget the exact way he says it but he's like he's, he's trying to think of like what word describes what he's feeling and albert's like it's sadness and he's like i am sadness death has an adopted daughter which that's just hilarious because why not death has a daughter uh i think <laughs> you can't really spoil a book like this uh one of my favorite scenes was so <laughs> because mort takes a day off death wants to take a day off and he actually takes like a little hiatus and at, while he's gone mort kind of has to fill in for him so he's going out and responding to these different situations where people are supposed to die and mort this whatever this is like a, a minor it's it's a spoiler but like it's not going to ruin the book for you so turn away if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever but it's just kind of a funny thing that happens uh mort prevents someone from dying 
And because he did that, he kind of throws everything off. But what's hilarious about the situation is that the person that was supposed to have died in the minds of everyone in the world and according to like the records of the world this person is now dead they were meant to die because death explains to mort early on that like there's there's a time and place where everybody he has like our an hourglass he can see you know when this person is going to die and why this person is meant to be dead and since mort saved her she's not dead so she is technically gone in the eyes of everybody so she's walking around and people don't know she's there they don't acknowledge her because to them and everyone else in the world this person is dead they don't exist so she's freaking out she's like yelling at people trying to get their attention she finally gets somebody to like acknowledge that she exists so then they can see her it just the whole everything about this world at, at least for more i expect a lot of this world to function this way is just bonkers and it had me laughing pretty much throughout the entire book i would say that about halfway through the book it became more plot focused and not just about the humor because the, the first half is largely setting up this ridiculous premise and lots of comedy and lots of character introductions and things like that and the second half is more focused on the actual plot of the story it's still hilarious throughout but i did laugh a lot more uh in the first half of the book but overall i mean the, the book is a, a wild ride and it's hard for me to really find this much humor in a book, and I was surprised by how funny it actually was, which really just speaks to Terry Pratchett's prose and knowledge of writing and just the way that he weaves together this story and this dialogue, and he'll even just drop, like, knowledge on you when it's not even being funny. He'll just say, like, there's certain parts of this book that are almost, like, philosophical in a way and just incredibly intelligent. There's commentary within this book that i wasn't really expecting out of this silly premise uh, my favorite line let me pull it up mort is asking death about history and and he says history isn't like that history unravels gently like an old sweater it has been patched and darned many times re-knitted to suit different people shoved in a box under the sink of censorship to be cut up for the dusters of propaganda yet it always eventually manages to spring back into its old familiar shape history has a habit of changing the people who think they are changing it history always has a few tricks up its frayed sleeve it's been around a long time and that to me within the world it makes sense that this is explained but it's also just like a yeah this guy knows what's up like there's just you'll get hit with with lines and dialogue like this that just kind of make you think and i really appreciated that <laughs> one of the sets of characters that i don't remember if they were named or not i apologize <laughs> Mort is basically about to be mugged by this group of people and in the text they're swearing it looks like because there's like a bunch of dashes for for the words but then he <laughs> Terry Pratchett writes and they pronounce each of the dashes flawlessly or something like that so <laughs> they're literally speaking in like expletives but actually speaking the expletives or the dashes or like the censored words instead of the actual words it's just this kind of shit's hilarious to me so I, I laughed a lot during that scene and i hope that they're like in all the books because that would be great as far as world building and pacing i thought the book was paced wonderfully it's pretty short it's hard to pace it poorly unless it's so uninteresting which is not this book is great throughout it kept me interested the entire time lots of witty humor lots of fun dialogue and the world building itself is probably minimal in this one because it's just a story focused on death but you do get bits and pieces of various places that death has to travel and you get a little bit of an intro of discworld itself i'm sure other novels in this series expand on the world more and explain more of like why it exists the way that it does so the world building isn't crazy but i mean it's like a 250 page book it's i don't know 300 pages it's just under 300 pages but like they're they're pretty slim and the text isn't tiny or anything so i i wouldn't expect a crap ton of world building out of this the first death book in the series i'm definitely gonna read more though because this was funny i'm probably gonna read guards guards next and try try out a couple of these different books or series within Discworld before continuing uh but i'm i'm definitely enjoying it so far i thought it was hilarious um if you're into any kind of absurdism or wacky setup but also 
like a, a good mix of sort of like heartfelt moments and just intelligence terry pratchett hats off to you because this this was a lot of fun and a great introduction to discworld uh, and again, if you want like an in-depth, what is Discworld? Should I read it? What is it about? I'm going to link Alan's channel down below. And as I'm recording this, I can't think of off the top of my head, but I'll link some others down below as well. Um, definitely check those out if you want to get into Discworld and get a better overall feeling of what to expect because I thought it was great. So like and subscribe as always, guys. Uh, do hit up Patreon if you want to support the channel financially. That is, of course, always optional, but always appreciated. Do jump in Discord discord do jump in discord though and let me know your thoughts on discworld and feel free to leave me a comment down below what was your favorite novel where did you start discworld i'd be interested to see kind of where everybody's entry point was to this fantastical series uh and where you would recommend i go next i'm thinking it's going to be guards guards that is the other one i bought so that's probably what it, what it will be but if i'm making a grave grave mistake please let me know and until next time everybody keep reading